Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabihare Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabihare Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Giridharadhari <coughs> Yashodanandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabihari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Jaya Gopi Jana Vallabha Giri Varadhari Yashodanandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Vrajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava 
Okay, Hare Krishna, thank you so much for allowing me to speak today on this beautiful Sunday. We will be speaking from Srimad Bhagavatam tonight. Just one moment. Actually, before I recite the text of Srimad Bhagavatam, I wanted to um, share some some of the recent meetings with people that I've had on Sankirtan, which was quite inspiring. And uh, I'll begin with that, and then we, we'll go into reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, I was distributing books this week in Balboa Park, and uh, one of the recent feedback that I've got is I, I met this um, people from Kazakhstan. It's a country in Central Asia. Anyone ever been to Kazakhstan here? You can raise your hand. If you ever made it there. <laughs> the pr most prominent languages in Kazakhstan is um, Russian and Kazakh. So this family, we, we had a nice discussion. They were quite open-minded. 
and they revealed to me about the tradition that they practice, which is they practice, they're Muslims. And specifically, they were speaking about these five pillars of Islam. Anybody know these five pillars? <laughs> um, you know some? Yeah. It's, yeah, it was very interesting. I'll, I'll mention them here. The, f the first one is um, Shahada. It's a declaration of faith, which means that they accept one God, and the messenger of God is Muhammad. And then the other one is Namaz, which is, is a prayer that they practice for five times during uh, the day, which takes about 30 minutes each time. And they practice it in, uh, in the morning, uh, in the afternoon, before evening, in the evening, and at night, close to night. And the one that practice at night is actually called Isha, <laughs> which is quite interesting, the name of Krishna. And then after this, they have uh, another pillar, Saum, which is fasting for one month. Uh, it's at, at the month of Ramadan. And that, in that month, they d don't take any intoxication. They withstand from intoxication. And also they uh, with, withstand from sexual life as well. And the fourth one is Zakat, which is, I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, 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 from, from, uh, from morning to, to evening, they fast all day long, yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, yes, yeah, so the fourth one is almsgiving called zakat, and it's uh, meant for purification. And anyone is, who's in need, they give donation, they give Lakshmi to for purification. And the last one is hajj, which is, uh, of course, not everyone can do this, but it's a, it's a pilgrimage to a, a Mecca, a holy place. And also, the, they were speaking about um, how sometimes, if, if God willing, he will, he will make some, some things happen. It's called inshallah and manshallah, if, if those things already happen by the mercy of God. Yes, yes. Uh, mashallah, right? Okay. So yeah, that was quite interesting. And they were speaking to me how in Kazakhstan these days, they have this um, relationship with or the face is that they, they are so open-minded, they want to understand the culture of other traditions, and they also want to unite with them in some common practice. They, they, they practice yoga, sometimes they visit different churches and mosques. And she told me that uh, yeah, people in Kazakhstan are very, very open-minded. And they were also asking questions about our tradition, what is the goal of yoga, what is Krishna consciousness, who is Krishna exactly? So I thought it was very interesting, and I shared some literature with them. They were happy to receive it. And then another person I met recently, her name is Jeanette, and she's, um, she was looking for medicine, actually, because she, um, um, she had this mutation disease from very conception. And she was saying that she, she's going from doctor to doctor, trying to f find solution for her problem. And eventually she came across some, some drug company who gave her some medicine, but she has to pay, f um, it, it's, it costs $1,500 a day just for those pills. It's, it's completely insane. But luckily, she, she, was, she was very lucky she, that this company actually, she's, the company's paying for everything. I, I, I guess they, maybe they doing a test run or something like that on the medicine. But actually, I said that the real medicine is not in the pills. <laughs> it's a knowledge in books. You know, if we have knowledge of Krishna consciousness, then um, we understand that this temporary things related to our body, it's, we can avoid this, but focusing on, on, on the supreme goal of life, that gives the real remedy and relief. <laughs> so she agreed, and she also took uh, our books. So those are uh, two uh, stories that happened to me uh, recently. Um, but now we'll go uh, to read Srimad Bhagavatam. We're going to be reading from 3rd Canto, chapter number 7, text 14, if anyone would like to follow. So I'll read the Sanskrit and also translation and purport by Srila Prabhupada. Ashesha Sanklisha Shamam Vidati, Guna Nova Dashava Nam Murari, Kimba Punast Charanara Vinda, Paragi Sevarati Ratmalabda. It's a very nice text. So the translation, simply by chanting and hearing of the transcendental name, form, etc., of the personality of God, Sri Krishna, one can achieve the cessation of unlimited miserable conditions. Therefore, what to speak of those who have attained attractions for serving the flavor of the dust of the lotus 
the Lord's lotus feet and the purport Srila Prabhupada. Two different methods uh, for controlling the material senses are recommended in the Vedic scriptural wisdom. One of them is the process of jnana, or the path of philosophical understanding of the Supreme, Brahma, Paramatma, Bhagavan. Uh, the other is that of direct engagement in the transcendental loving devotional service of the Lord. Of these two most popular methods, the path of devotional service is recommended here as the best because one of the path of devotional service does not have to wait for the attainment of the fruitive results of, of pious activities or for the results of knowledge. The two stages of executing devotional service are, first, the stage of practicing devotional service with our present senses under the regulations of the recognized scriptures, and second, attaining the sincere attachment for serving the, the particles of the dust of the lotus feet of the Lord. The first stage is called sadhana bhakti, or devotional service for the neophyte, which is rendered under the direction of a pure devotee, and the second stage is called raga bhakti, in which the mature devotee automatically takes to the various services of the Lord out of sincere attachment. The great sage Maitreya now gives the final answer to all the questions of Vidura. Devotional service to the Lord is the ultimate means to mitigate all the miserable conditions of material existence. The path of knowledge, or that of mystic gymnastics, may be adopted as, as a means for the, for the purpose, but unless mixed with bhakti or devotional service, they are unable to award the desired result. By practicing sadhana bhakti, one may gradually rise to the point of raga bhakti, and by performing raga bhakti in love and transcendental service, one can even control the supreme powerful Lord. And that's the end of the commentary. And so uh, this, this uh, canto, it's called the status quo, canto number three. It means the existing state of affairs. And that's, it's a beautiful canto in which there's a vast range of topics being brought up. Mm -hmm. It speaks about creation, sub-creation. also speaks about uh, family life, how time works, Sankhya philosophy by Kapila Dev. And there's yeah, many inspiring great personalities who are, that appear in this uh, canto as well, including Vidura, Uddhava, Maitreya Rishi, uh, Lord Brahma, Kumaras, Jaya and Vijay, Devahuti, and Kardamamuni, Kapila Dev. But this, just to recollect and see where we are in, this, in Bhagavatam, um, this is a conversation between Vidura and Maitreya Rishi. And Vidura is, he was insulted by Duryodhana. He called him a Shudrani or Dashiputra, son of maidservant. And so therefore, uh, Vidura gave up the house and went into the pilgrimage. And um, Duryodhana didn't like Vidura because he was always favoring the side of the Pandavas. He would always try to help him against the vicious plans of the Kauravas. And actually, uh, we see seen that Vidura is, is, is going for pilgrimage because it, apparently it seems like there's a disturbance um, due to this, this insult. But the actual reason for this is, is not that. It's, it's, it's because he wanted to meet uh, a Rishi, Maitreya Rishi, to discuss transcendental topics. And he, couldn't, uh, he did not uh, feel qualified to approach the Lord directly, who was personally present on, on the planet. So he wanted to um, associate with somebody who, who very, is very close to, to Krishna, but not exactly directly to, uh, to Krishna himself. Because of the jhana this is the unfavorable association with the Kauravas. He didn't feel that it's the right, thing, the right thing to do. And so in the beginning, he went to uh, different uh, holy places, visiting the temples of Lord uh, Vishnu. And then he ran into Uddhava. Uddhava is a very close friend of Krishna. His eternal, eternal associate, Nitya Nitya Siddha. And then he was inquiring from Uddhava uh, about uh, the, the Krishna and the dynasty of Yadu. It actually described that Uddhava, he was constantly meditating on lotus feet of Krishna. And when he was young, uh, his mother would call him to have breakfast. And Uddhava was so, so absorbed in worshiping the deity of Krishna, he wouldn't even hear his mother who was feeling hung hungry at all. <laughs> it's quite beautiful. Um, and so yeah, they discussed the pastimes of Lord Krishna in uh, Vrindavan, Mathura, and also Dwarka. And in the beginning, um, Uddhava, he was he was feeling so happy that uh, Vidura reminded him of Krishna that he went in the silent ecstasy for, uh, for one muhurta for like about 48 minutes. <laughs> That's quite amazing. That's 
shown the, the real devotion of Uddhava to Krishna. And so, yeah, Vidura was inquiring, but at some point Uddhava didn't feel um, that he could um, answer the questions of Vidura, or he actually felt that Maitreya Rishi is more qualified, more senior to answer the questions of Vidura. So he pointed to uh, Maitreya Rishi, because he did not, did not want to be offensive to Maitreya Rishi. And so now we see that Vidura is, is making inquiries. Before that text in the Bhagavatam, Vidura was making very important to our own spiritual life inquiries. And he listed these four uh, interesting questions, which I'll mention. The first question uh, by Vidura was that uh, he's asking, if God is the complete whole and is unchangeable, how is he connected with the material modes of nature and their activities? That was the first question. And of course, we understand that um, that Krishna is 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 saguna. Is 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 uh, he has qualities and relationship with his devotees when he comes here, for instance, like with Arjuna. But also his nirguna, he is no no qualities in this material world. So therefore, Krishna's chidmatra is, is absolute. Is is um, is completely completely spiritual. And so the the second question. Uh, the Vidura is asking, he says, Krishna is, if Krishna is self-satisfied, then why does he create anything, then maintain it, and at the end dissolve the three worlds? Why does he create this material world? And uh, we understand that uh, it's not a desire of the Lord, it's our unlawful desire for this material creation to, to be here so we can become Ishvara and uh, try to enjoy as like God. So for that ex- reason, the, the, the world, is, this material creation is, is, uh, yeah, is, is, is created by Krishna. And the third uh, question that Vidura is asking about the jiva, he says if uh, the jiva, the pure soul, if, it, if, the, if the pure soul is pure consciousness, then how does it become engaged in nishans? And then he was asking why the living entity is subjected to miseries and un- un- unfortunate events happening to them if the Supreme Personality of God had expands into their heart. So that's the fourth question. And um, very beautifully, it's explained here, uh, the problems of the jiva in this chapter. It's a problem of misidentification. And Srila Prabhupada gives this example that as the moon is reflected in the water, it begins to tremble. So similarly, the jiva, when associated with the body, appears like metta, but it's actually not. It's a um, uh, misidentification. And um, I, I was listening to a class of Srila Prabhupada the other day, and it was kind of related matter was discussed. Um, um, Srila Prabhupada was having an interview with someone, and uh, the reporter asked him, um, was it difficult? Did you, did you um, stumble upon any difficulties bringing this philosophy and culture of Krishna consciousness from India, which was so foreign back in those days, to maybe not so foreign, but foreign to a large degree of people, to the West? And Shul Prabhupada would speak in so confident. <laughs> so there cannot be any problem. He <laughs> said, There cannot be any problem. He said, For example, I'm speaking to you, and you're a sane person, you're a sane man. He says, So if you have some mistakes, some flow in your philosophy, and I tell you what it is, then a sane man, he would accept it and adapt to it. He would admit it that, Yes, yes, I accept. This is true. But if you're something else, of course, if you're not a sane person, then you won't admit it. So what's, what should be the difficulty? if I'm presenting this very logical and attractive philosophy. And he was saying that the real mistake is that we put so much importance on our body and we neglect this, this, uh, the soul, existence of the soul, the symptoms of life. And so Maitreya, uh, Maitreya Rishi is explaining everything so nicely, but ultimately in the purport it is, it is also mentioned, everything boils down to devotional service, bhakti, Bhagavad Bhakti Yogena. That's what uh, everything comes down to. And that's uh, serving Krishna by chanting his name or any other activities that we perform in our sadhana bhakti. And also Krishna Kata, which is very, very important to all of us. In uh, one of the texts of this chapter, uh, Srila Prabhupada also writes in the commentaries, he says, anyone who is a devotee of the Lord knows about the Lord to some extent. And devotional service to the Lord makes him able to know everything by the grace of the Lord. So we might know something to an extent, but if we engage in 
devotional service, then Krishna can give us intelligence. And uh, you know, we might appear ignorant externally, but because we, uh, we're devotees of Krishna, then we actually know every intricate matter of, of Krishna. I mean, of course, it's, it's to a degree that Krishna bestows his mercy upon us. And like it is mentioned in the fifth uh, chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, then the nishans is destroyed. Krishna gives us intelligence, and just like the sun arises gradually over the horizon, similarly the knowledge also is given to us, this perfect knowledge of understanding, um, you know, that, yes, I should surrender to Krishna. Bahonam janmanam ante gyanavanam prapadyate. That is the actual knowledge. I should sur surrender to Krishna. And then I'll, I'll get real intelligence. I'll un understand the state of affairs in this material world. But I want, I, what I wanted to touch on in this text is the process of sadhana bhakti. Srila Prabhupada explains that there are two different methods of controlling the material senses, which is shastric and recommended in the Vedic spiritual wisdom, the text of Vedic sp uh, scriptural, uh, sp spiritual wisdom. First process is jnana, the path of philosophical understanding of the Supreme, and also uh, bhakti. And bhakti is, is, is divided into two stages, which is sadhana bhakti and raga bhakti. Of course, we, we do not practice gyan yoga in uh, this mandir. <laughs> we practice bhakti because that's the direct path of um, understanding the absolute truth. Gyan philosophy is also there. It's, it's also shastric um, and eventually, but it's, it's more or less... Um, a step towards bhakti, in simple words. So, and specifically, I wanted to speak about sadhana bhakti today. I had your permission. <laughs> Hare Krishna. So, uh, sadhana bhakti is, um, I took some notes. Sadhana bhakti means a regulated spiritual practice that all living entities can participate in, being attracted to, to it. And we'll speak about this from the point of Satisfaction, because we want to be satisfied and happy in, in practice in sadhana. Um, we understand that as living beings, as, as servants of, of Krishna, of God, that service is, is a part of our nature. It's a central part of our nature. We are servants. We are, we, we, this is our position. And now, in the beginning stages, as Srila Prabhupada mentions, that that service has to be regulated under some guidance of scripture and spiritual teachers, shiksha, diksha, gurus. And the most important uh, thing in sadhana bhakti is chanting the holy name and, and harikata. Those are two things that are most important because they will um, help us to, to be attracted to participate in practical activities in devotional life. And why do we need this uh, sadhana bhakti is to discipline to uh, become disciplined in practice. Srila Prabhupada said that discipline means knowing that you're not the body, not identifying yourself with the body. And there's a nice text in the also fifth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Kama Krodha Vimuktanam, Yatinam Yata Chaitasam, Abhito Brahma Nirvanam, Varta Tevdi It says, those who are free from anger and material desire, who are self-realized and self-disciplined, and constantly endeavoring for perfection, are assured of liberation in the Supreme in the very near future. So discipline help us to uh, gradually uh, attain uh, liberation or attain favor of the Lord. Because initially, if sadhana bhakti is maintained properly, then, then the Lord can bestow benedictions and uh, mercy upon us. Yeah, so we regulate our um, physical and psychological body to, in some way, awaken the, the, the soul the realization of the soul. We have to be um, healthy physically and, and, and psychologically for it. And then the soul, the, the realization will come. It comes as a, um, this knowledge is, is given to us uh, by the torch, by the mercy of the spiritual master. Like we always say before, speaking, Oma Jnana Timrandasya Jnananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun Militam Yinatasmai Shri Gurve Namaha that I'm actually born in, in complete darkness, in complete ignorance. But the spiritual master, he has this torch of knowledge. And because of that torch of knowledge, I'm able to see. I have nothing of my own. It's all uh, a kripa, a mercy of, of, of the Guru. And of course, of the Vaishnavas. So in the beginning stages of sadhana bhakti, we need to make a lot of efforts, a lot of efforts. 
Yeah, it's, and it's not easy. But in some time, that practice becomes more or less natural for us and we become attracted to it. For instance, one of the most important practices of sadhana bhakti also is, is waking up early. It's not easy. Because, <laughs> uh, well, we might be enthusiastic in the beginning to wake up early, but then in some time we, we might have so many, so many things to catch up on. We might be a little tired over time. So it's, it becomes difficult. But ultimately, yeah, we, we just have to continue surrender to, to the benefits, which I'll mention uh, in, the, in, the, in the future, the benefits of, the benefits of Sandha Bhakti, there's so many of them. So, yeah, we'll have to continue. And if we continue, the soul will, will, be, will be feeling very happy <laughs> that we do, that we, did, we, don't, we didn't give up. And then we can be very productive and we can, be, we can balance our psycho, uh, psychophysical constitution. We can be um, very happy just naturally by, by, this, uh, sadhana, by maintaining this sadhana bhakti. And so the benefits of sadhana bhakti is one of the prominent benefits is that we become, we become free from fear. Srila Prabhupada was given a lecture one time and someone asked him, how do you feel when you chant the holy name? And he, he was silent for a moment. And then he said, I feel fearless. <laughs> no fear. So that, that sadhana bhakti, chanting, you know, waking up early, attaining the programs, makes you feel fearless. And then uh, this, this by st stable practice, you know, we, we understand the quality of the soul, the qualities of the soul, satchitananda, eternity, knowledge, and, and bliss becomes all natural for us. And also it helps us to be stable in um, some difficulties we, we experience. We might experience some difficulties in life from our karma, of some material desires. And this regulated sadhana bhakti can help us to be strong and not to deviate in practice. There's parabdha karma, which is something that um, you can you know, eliminate completely. But of course, when we devotees, Krishna, Krishna helps us. <laughs> and um, yeah, so as I mentioned, what goes into that practice of sadhana bhakti, most important is chanting of the holy name, collectively and by yourself. And what sadhana bhakti teaches is how to become uh, of service, how to become a servant. It's very important. So waking up early, and if you want to get into that habit, we need to also go to sleep, <laughs> not too late. And another good th thing is, is, is to create favorable conditions for our resting environment. Ventilate the room, not eat too much before we go to sleep, especially beans and nuts and grains and some sweets. We should try to avoid this. And when we wake up, when we took that rest, which we shouldn't sleep for that long, maybe six, seven hours, what do we do first? Well, what should we do first when we just woke up? What do you think? Mm -mm. <laughs> There's something. Yes. <laughs> I saw, uh, I was staying with some devotees uh, visiting us, and when they wake up, they, they begin chanting very loudly, Hare Krishna Mahamantra, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, <laughs> like this. But yeah, when we wake up, we should offer obeisances to the Guru. It's really, really important. Because now Krishna is, is favoring us, and it's all because of we, that we've, the fact that we accepted the spiritual master. The spiritual master is always praying for us, is our best well-wisher. So the first thing we do is we offer a pranam mantra to the spiritual master. And if we don't have a diksha guru, we offer our pranam mantra to him, our Srila Prabhupada. And then we take a bath, we brush our teeth, wash our tongues, and everything required for that. Put on, and put on til tilak. So sometimes devotees go to work. <laughs> so I don't want to wear tilak at work. <laughs> people might ask question, questions. So we, what we can do is we can put water tilak and chant necessary mantras. Yeah. And after this, we, we put on clean clothes, especially if we engaged in sadhana bhakti, the morning practice. It's really important for the consciousness to wear clean clothes. It's, it's very much stressed in, um, 
even in uh, Bhagavad Gita, there's a famous text of the Brahminical qualities, which we should all strive for. Of course, by work, when not all of us might be Brahmins, but uh, at least by qualities, we should strive to be Brahminical. Krishna says, Shamadama tapo shocham kshantarajavam evacha jnana vijnana astikyam brahma karma sabhavaja. He says that those are the qualities of the Brahmins. The qualities work by these qualities peacefulness, self control, austerity, and shocham, purity. And then he says, this, this, uh, tolerance, honesty, knowledge, wisdom, religiousness. Those are very important qualities of the Brahmins. And, and cleanliness is one of them, purity, shocham. And now after this, after we've done with bathing and everything else, we begin to directly to this spiritual practice, the sadhana, which is we're offering our prayers to our spiritual master and all the members of Parampara system. We sing the Mangalarti song, Gurashtaka. We can do it uh, at the temple, but if we can't come to the temple, we can do it at home before the altar. Or we can do it uh, elsewhere, on the road. We can sing it, or we can do it silently in our mind. It's really important also to go through the whole uh, this, this uh, bhajans, morning program. Mangalarti, chanting Hare Krishna, singing Hare Krishna, and the prayers to Lord Nisimhadev, and also to Tulsi Devi. Chanting Shikshashtakam prayers is also important for us. And remembering the offenses of the holy name. If we are chanting the holy name, we should always constantly remember the offenses. Actually, uh, one time I was uh, singing here in the temple Tulsi prayers, and I was supposed to, when you're done singing, you recite the offenses, the ten offenses, you know. And I remember I was reciting the offenses. First offense, the blessed the devotees, the dedicated the life to the propagation of the holy names of the Lord. And then I was sitting and putting uh, on uh, the uh, beads on Srila Prabhupada, and uh, His Holiness Bhadrin Swami Maharaj was there next to me. <laughs> and he tapped me on my shoulder, and he said, do it at attentively. <laughs> do it attentively. <laughs> Because I was just, uh, you know, just kind of mechanically going through this. But we should meditate and remember. It's it's important before we start chanting. So that's that. Um, and then we begin, of course, after all of this, we start chanting the holy name Japa, participate in Japa. And after Japa, we often we should feel that our consciousness become purified. And uh, on after that, it's very good to... Mm -hmm. continue and maybe read something. Read Srila Prabhupada's books. <laughs> the best practice of the japa. Of course, if we have uh, time for that. And it's also very healthy to dedicate a uh, morning program, program to um, the second part, which is you know, Guru Puja, and then uh, listen to class of Srimad Bhagavatam. But before the breakfast, we should also dedicate a little bit of time of walking or doing some exercise, some little gymnastics or yoga practice. You know, just to balance our physical health, like Javita Prabhu always takes a walk in the morning. <laughs> That's very nice. I always also try to take a walk or do a little bit of exercise just for 10 minutes. You know, it's, it's good for the mind. And then maybe pranayama, a little bit of breathing is also very nice. So those are general recommendations. And we should raise up at least you know, maybe four, four or five o'clock for family, or for those who have families, we here wake up, uh, of course, for Mangalarti at 4.30, we have to be here uh, without being late at 4.30 o'clock in the temple room. But if we, if we have uh, some work and some responsibilities at home, we don't live at a temple, maybe 4 or 5 o'clock, between 3 or 5 o'clock would be a good time to wake up in the morning. <clears throat> it's very auspicious. And now it, it creates a very nice impression on our consciousness, this, this morning program, because we stay in, um, we associate with this spiritual energy for like almost five or six hours in the morning. And that gives us a, an opportunity to then participate in something practical after the morning program, which is you know, karma yoga for those who work or <laughs> any devotional activities here at the temple. And we can be strong if we go through that morning program. We can r try to remember Krishna, and, and we will. <laughs> and I forgot, of course, uh, taking prasadam <laughs> before we take off to, to work. Take, it's <laughs> very essential, right? <laughs> so when, and spiritual master is always happy when we take prasadam, not when we eat something you know, boga or mixed with, with prasadam. 
Yeah, there's a, actually a line in, in our Mangalarti Gurashtaka prayers that uh, the spiritual master is happy when, when his disciples, they take prasadam. And so when we participate in work, it's important to, before we go to our work, is to, in our mind, if maybe before the altar, is to dedicate the activities and the fruit of that work to, to Krishna, to our spiritual master. It'll be very conducive to also remembering Krishna. And I remember speaking of work, I was uh, distributing books and this uh, uh, time at UCSD. And I met this young man who was studying international business and uh, finances. And I told him, I, I have a, a humble uh, financial advice for you. <laughs> I told him, well, of course, I'm a monk. <laughs> if you like to take it, it's, your, it's up to you. But I said, if you want to be wealthy, uh, never work for anyone. Because if you work for anyone, usually the employers, the hats, they give you the bare minimum, the minimum they can give you so they can maintain you at the position. And also sometimes for after maybe some years, five years maybe or less, some people, we become a little, how to say, we also begin to do the very minimum just to get the job done. So it's obviously it's not the most ideal transaction. So, and the second advice I, I gave him is, is if you want to, for the, for the money to keep flowing into your life, you have to give a portion of you Lakshmi, of, of your money, to, to, to God, to service of God, to, to preaching, just like um, any major tradition in the world. And do, we mentioned the people who practice Islam, they, they do it, and also bhaktas, you know, we also do that. We come here and make a donation for Krishna, this in the hundi over there, in any different way. <laughs> and that's very nice, and we've had a lot of help um, at the December marathon when we were distributing Srila Prabhupada's books, so we are very grateful for your support with uh, donations. That way, uh, many people were receiving Srila Prabhupada's books, even if they didn't have a chance to to donate. And I've met a few nice people from India today as well. They would, they would say, often how they would say that, uh, I have this books, I have this, I know everything. <laughs> but I would tell them, well, if you do, if you'd like to help, we, we're preaching on behalf of our, of our guru of our spiritual master so maybe you can maybe you can give and help us and give a little donation so you can be also benefited you know and purified and they they would give you know, some people would give 10 20 dollars and uh, then i give a, a free copy to some next person so that's that <coughs> those are my humble advices <laughs> to him and so sadhana bhakti is um, practiced in two ways, especially when it comes to chanting. And they're like the, the wings of the bird. You can't have one without the other. <laughs> and it's the individual practice of japa meditation and also the collective practice of kirtan. And uh, collective practice is important. We do it in, in groups of people, and in those groups of people, especially if we're just beginning, or if we are not very experienced, if there's some uh, advanced devotees, they can, just by their presence, they can enhance our chanting as well. Excuse me. And then the individual practice. We have our personal relationship with Krishna, our personal um, bhajan. In uh, Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita, chapter number six, at the end of the chapter, when Krishna speaks about uh, the, the best of the yogis, is the bhakta. Yoginam api sarvisham madgatinantaratmana. He says, Shadavan bhajate imam sameyukto tamomataha. Krishna says, this, uh, he mentions this word, Shadavan bhajate, bhajate, or bhajan. This is, uh, the, the root of this word is bhaj, you know refers to, well, the English word is worship, but it's more service. It's difficult to translate that word. The translation of that text is, of all the yogis, the one with great faith who always abides in me, thinks of me within himself, and renders transcendental love and service to me, he is the most intimately united with me in, with me in yoga, and is the highest of all. Krishna says, that is my opinion. So that's our morning bhajan, meeting Krishna in the holy name. Very beautiful practice. And we should try to do it attentively, of course.
even in we come atten- we should be attentive in japa we should be attentive in kirtan as well and without the sankirtan we wouldn't be so happy practicing by ourselves it's it's very difficult i remember i was just recently some time ago i was sick for maybe a week and i i couldn't eat anything for four days and i was just laying on the floor just really having some difficulties my back went out my lower back and i couldn't go and do my uh, regular service of sankirtan distributing books and uh, i just felt it you know that's without the service and without association it's it's really difficult and even just a little bit of association when we come to the temple we can uh, give a mat to a person and we can give him uh, um, you know, the, wa- the, the water from the altar or fire like this you know, pass it around it's a little bit of service but it, it counts and it makes us feel very happy and sometimes of course it's difficult to regulate sadhana bhakti so therefore we, we can have someone who can help us or set an example, a mentor it's good if we approach someone uh, who can give us some guidance in spiritual practice. And that's completely essential. If a devotee is um, happy, his son the bhakti is on a good level. And Krishna also reveals himself to him. And if Krishna reveals himself, then the, the taste for more bhajan, for more kirtan, will, will also take place. <laughs> And I should say that, um, and Srila Prabhupada also stressed it very much, that it's quite essential for this sadhana bhakti in Krishna consciousness, because it's a preaching movement, is to participate in um, serving the jivas, giving them mercy, giving them an opportunity to also come in contact with a pure devotee, Uttama Bhakta Srila Prabhupada, our founder Acharya. And the best way to preach is if, if we're not just uh, trying to speak um, of course we can share our realizations but if we just try to preach on our own from our own interest and from our own b- behalf like that um, especially if we do it for a long time a person might say oh okay i've understood everything thank you that was plenty i appreciate that and he just takes off <laughs> but no the the conclusion should be every preaching program should end with um, sharing Srila Prabhupada's books sharing prasadam you know and and even more important if if that's possible so people can understand about the regulative principles, four regulative principles that we follow, and chanting the holy name. That would be ideal. <laughs> it's a very important aspect of our practice preaching. And I can, if I can't preach, if I can distribute books, I can help those who distribute books. I can give in charity, or I can um, support somehow other those who go out on Sankirtan, for, inst- for instance. Or I can uh, be an organizer and manage something related to uh, preaching, related to the Sankirtan movement. I can organize a harina or <laughs> uh, organize a, an opportunity for devotees to set up a table somewhere at the festival or something like that. Or, or find out about a new place where they can go. It's also, it's also service in accounts. Srila Prabhupada said that um, before preaching, we should study the books. It gives us an light, in, 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 in enlivening experience. Vijay Prabhu would always stress that. He used to live with us here. He says that oh, before I go out to preach and speak with people, I read Srila Prabhupada's books. I read Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, for an hour before I go out. <laughs> That's, uh, it does give so much um, of an enlivening experience if you read Srila Prabhupada's books. And that pleases Srila Prabhupada. He says, everything I have instructed is in my books. And if I depart, he says, there's no cause of lamentation because I will always be with you through my books, he said. I will always remain with you in that way. And the Guru is not only in the body, he's also in, in instructions in his, in his books. So to preach... And to utilize our human form of life uh, as a way to help people is important. And that's the whole um, essence in, in the morning program, is so we can become strong and have enthusiasm to go out and preach and give mercy to the jivas. I find this very, very amazing. Srila Prabhupada said about his books, he said, the words in my books are ambrosial, 
because they're not my personal words. They're the words of the Acharyas, the instructions from them. And he says, the purports are my emotional ecstasy. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> and then uh, Srila Prabhupada, his day would begin at about 12.30, maybe 1.30, between that time. And then he would wake up and sit and uh, still and chant Japa for like an hour or so. <laughs> and then he would begin to dictate these books with great care and deliberation. He would choose every word so carefully. <laughs> He'd be very concentrated as though the whole uh, creation depended on it. And yes, maybe, and it, yeah, I think it does, it did depend on, on, on this. <clears throat> and distributing books is also a service to to Srila Prabhupada, to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to our spiritual master, to all the Vaishnavas. And its books are recorded kirtans. They um, radiate spiritual energy. And they create auspiciousness. When you set up a table, when you step a, f a foot on the Sankirtan spot, auspiciousness is created. <laughs> and so when people take those books, that radiation goes elsewhere into the homes of people. And imagine if everyone had Srila Prabhupada's books in their house. <laughs> the world would be such a, a great place. <laughs> And so I'll, uh, I only have so much time, I also wanted to speak about the importance of the holy name in chanting. I'll just say one thing, <clears throat> or maybe a few things, that my latest realization about chanting was that if we have correct understanding of, of who we are when we approach the holy name, that I'm a fragmental part and parcel of Krishna, and uh, this, this, the Sambandha Gyan, there's a relationship with the holy name. Krishna is the supreme master and I'm his subordinate servant. If I remember that role, then the, the love for, for Krishna will be awakened. But I, until I, I do remember that, I should make an effort to try. And uh, if I try, you know, eventually, <laughs> hopefully, then the Holy Name will respond if we are very sincere in our practice. Because ultimately, all the energies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and love of the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is in the Holy Name. Nam Nam Akari Bahudani Jasarva Shaktis. There's a verse in Shikshashtakam. Tatra Pitani Amitas Marane Nakalaha. Etadrishita Vakripan Bhagavan Mamapi. To Daiva Midrisha Mahajani Naduraga. That uh, the Holy Name uh, alone can render all benediction to all living entities, to living beings. And then the, Krishna has hundreds and millions of holy names, like Krishna and Govinda. And in his transcendental names, he's invested his transcendental energies, his love, in other words. And there's no rules. There's no fast and hard rules for chanting. We can do it uh, at any time, in any place, with anyone, engage people <laughs> also. And, and the Lord, he appeared in that holy name in this uh, Kali Yuga, to enable us uh, to approach him. And it's it's quite easy to approach Krishna. We don't have to do elaborate sacrifices, meditate for you know, some, so, so, such a long time. The names, the, 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 the name of Krishna is, is, is approached by just by chanting sincerely. Of course, mantra is received from, also from Guru, the Harinam. But then at the end of this uh, prayer, uh, Lord Chaitanya says that, uh, unfortunately, I have no attraction for them. You know, referring to, to us, we, you know, even though we chant, we might not have so much attraction. But by chanting continuously, continuously chanting and chanting, the attraction will come. Just like a jaundice disease, right? <laughs> Everything's bitter. But then by taking the sugar cane, the sugar juice becomes sweet, sweeter and sweeter, <laughs> like that. So all devotees should uh, memorize one, at least maybe one shloka, maybe tonight. <laughs> if, I'm sure actually one, most of you remember, know that shloka. In the Brihan Naradya Purana, it says uh, three times. Hare Nama, Hare Nama, Hare Nama Eva Kevalam, Kalo Nasti Eva Nasti, Eva Nasti Eva Gatiranyata. That in this age of quarrel, where life is very short, there's so much hip hypocrisy going on, you know. The only means of deliverance is the holy name of Krishna. 
There's no other way. There's no other way. <laughs> no other way <laughs> at all. <laughs> and yes, Bhagavad Gita. There's many confirmations we have that it's 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 it's, it's true. Not only in in the Brihadaraju Purana, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna also says that uh, of all the sacrifices, I'm the holy name. There's also a nice text in the uh, Chitani Charitamrita. Kali Kali Namarupi Krishna Avatara Nama Hai Sarva Jagat Nistara. In this age of Kali, the holy name of the Lord, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, is the incarnation of Lord Krishna. Simply by chanting the holy name, one associates with the Lord directly. Anyone who does this is certainly delivered. So let's chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra together collectively and individually, and, and surely will be delivered. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, one more time. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you so much for your attention. Um, I don't know if we have time for questions. We don't have any time for questions. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, if you'd like uh, to ask any questions, I'll, I'll be around in the top room. And now we can participate in the final kirtan. Thank you so much. All glory to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you.